Next question um, from Joel. What do you believe or hope will be the most significant scientific advancement over the next few decades? And I, I, have, I know I have a pat answer to this, but I'll wait to see if anyone else has one. No? We don't okay, know okay. what the next most significant it's, scientific discovery is going to be for crying out loud. Exactly. <laughs> The point I always say, if I what knew what I Why are you guys exploring Mars? What are you going to find there? We don't know. That's why we're going. Yes. Crying out loud. Great. And, and as a... Wait, 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 wait. wait. Okay, That's not go fair. On. It's no, not wait, wait, wait. No, there are two kinds of exploration. One of them is, I have no idea what I'm looking for. But maybe I'll find it when I see it. Okay, another, kind of, uh, another kind of explanation. You can't, you can't argue with him. I've learned it. It's another really kind of exploration thing. is we think we know what's going on and we want to test our hypotheses. That's another kind of exploration. And one of them is, is there life somewhere else? We know there's life in at least one place in the universe and that's called Earth. So what I want to do is go to the the, the frozen surface of Jupiter's moon, moon Europa, cut a hole, go ice fishing down there, put a submersible, see if something swims up to the camera and, camera and licks the lens. That's what I want to look for. Yeah. Look for life. Life. But Neil, you are looking for something. When was the last time you just went, I hope to discover something. <laughs> oh, you're always looking for something. No, but whenever we it's look for bad. something, we are often surprised. And I think that the point is that if we really could anticipate the progress of science, it almost, in some sense, wouldn't be worth doing because it we, we, means we'd already kind of know where we're going and what the answers are. And I think that, so when people ask me, what's the, what's the next great thing? I say, if I knew, I'd be doing it right now. And uh, so I think there is this sense we are driven by questions, interesting questions, but often, those questions lead us to answers that lead to more interesting questions that are totally different than the ones we came up I with. I say not just often, but most times. Yeah, I agree. so I think that... But you, but you can say something about the question which you really would wish to know the answer to. And, I mean, for, for me, it would be, what, what's consciousness? Oh, because yeah. because that's, that's totally baffling. Scott, Richard, you know what I think? I agree. Not that you asked, but what I think on this is... Uh, consciousness has kind of baffled us for a while, okay? And evidence that we haven't a clue about what consciousness is, is drawn from the, in, from the fact of how many books are published on the topic, right? We're not really continuing to publish books, not really, on like Newtonian physics. It's done, all right? So, so the fact that people keep publishing books on consciousness is the evidence we don't know anything about it, because if we knew all about it, you wouldn't have to keep publishing. <laughs> so, so, what I wonder, what I wonder, Richard, is whether there really is no such thing as consciousness at all, and that there's some other understanding of the functioning of the human brain that renders that question obsolete. To that, I've got to say, like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay. And am, I, am I, like, thinking? Or am I just, like, thinking that I'm thinking? Like, wow. <laughs> Will you Richard, stop with that? Wait, sorry. Richard. We went, we went decades, we went decades not understanding the precession of Mercury. It was this big mystery, and we invented solutions to it, like a mysterious planet Vulcan tugging on it such that the, its, per, its perihelion processed. And, and that wasn't the explanation at all. It was obviously general relativity, another thing, not the original question <laughs> we were asking. So, you say you want to know what consciousness is, maybe that's not even the right question. How about okay. this? What's the nature of consciousness? Excellent. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> um. <laughs> Actually, I, Tracy, I think I want to uh, direct this one to you. Um, Who's you? To Tracy. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> not, that's not Neil. I'll be happy. Okay, be okay. Happy. <laughs> okay. Um, Okay, it says here, 
Science has recently become somewhat trendy, popping up in the show The Big Bang Theory or in I Beep Loving Science on Facebook. Oh, she's here, she's here. Elizabeth. I know she's here. The, okay. Often the focus is not actually on the science, but making entertainment out of science. Is this ultimately good for science, do you think? So I think you have a perspective on that. I'd like I, yeah, I do. I, I, don't, um, I, I don't think when it's done well, it's uh, diminishing the science or, or the scientists for that matter. I think that what is really spectacular is when you can take high level science and apply storytelling and all kinds of things that we know help people learn about a subject. I mean, we learned in, again, broadcast news, I was with ABC News for many years, and if anyone said, well, we must do that story because it's very, very important, we knew that was just death because, you know, <laughs> eat your peas journalism or eat your peas writing, you know, you must know this because it's important is just, uh, it's never going to light a fire in people's imaginations, children or, or adults. So I, uh, I don't think it's turning, you know, Entertainment is not a bad word. Uh, as long as you continue to uh, preserve and, and communicate the, the real stuff, the real science. Uh, and that's the philosophy we, you know, we apply to this. We didn't want to do, oh, nod to science and then go off and tap dance. I mean, it was really engaging with the material, but recognizing that sometimes this stuff is really hard and you need to write it well, act it well, and, uh, and produce and it well, and I have to well. say, you do a great job of producing. I, I, I think you really do. Um, and uh, I only, I, I only uh, wanted I, I, to answer that question. Mm -hmm. All you have to look at is what is going on in this stage tonight. This is entertainment. I it, hope so. This is absolute <laughs> entertainment. I'm sitting here just watching. I'm, I'm ducking out of the way sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I'm sitting here watching it. It's making a point about science and how to convey and how to make science interesting to the public. You're getting into these. This is this I, I, is. Yeah, I agree. This is how to do it. Did you? Did you I think fun and entertainment are overrated. <laughs> <laughs> oh! I, that's because you're British. That's because yeah. you're British. It's, you no, know, no. It's okay. People are more alike than they are different. <laughs> Science is hard, but it's worth it. It's fascinating, it's enthralling. But if we only talk about the bits that are fun and make bangs and smells and things, then we, we don't do science justice. I, I was once, um, I mean, I, the, we, we use the phrase dumbing down, <gasps> and, and we, mustn't, we mustn't do that. Um, I, I once gave a speech at a, at a British conference um, ab about the uh, public um, communication of science, and I was ranting against dumbing down. And at, at the end, some, some man got up and said, this is not an exaggeration, this is a true story. He said, maybe we need dumbing down in order to bring women and minorities into science. Oh, no. <laughs> we're going to get there, because there are a few questions about that, in fact. Right. Right That's why we fought a war to get out of England and start a new country. <laughs> I have, to say, I have to say, he was booed in the original. Okay. Yeah, okay, good, absolutely. And we actually, speaking of that, we're gonna have, we are going to have Larry Summers here at one of our events next year, so you can ask him about that, if it, any of you know about that. But anyway, um, the, question is, uh, the next question is, many of you are involved or aligned with the skepticism movement. How do you keep an open mind scientifically without using skepticism as an excuse for inaction? Can a person be a product, proactive skeptic? I think that's an interesting question. Are you question. kidding? I knew you so, thought. Uh, well, I think, Lawrence, uh, correct me, but people c confuse, and the modern word that's been made up is conflate the word cynicism with the word skepticism. Yeah. Uh, two different words. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know not uh, a lot of young people, but one is uh, you're not going to pay any attention to anything. You, you just think everything's screwed up and uh, nothing's ever going to work out right. That's cynicism. But skepticism is you're presented with evidence and you do your best to uh, draw conclusions based on that. So, as the saying goes, uh, I am uh, Bill Nye, do you believe in ghosts? No. 
Uh, however, I'd love to see one. And bring it on. <laughs> and so, I am open-minded to the idea, but I, I, the more I look into it in the skeptical frame of uh, way of thinking, the less likely it seems. But bring it on. When I was young, <laughs> the universe was slowing down. Well, it turns out that's not, right? Mm -hmm. Do I run in circles screaming? Or do I go, that's cool. <laughs> but I do want to know why. Yeah. And Well, you know, and, and I think that's the point. It's being wrong is really the most exciting thing in oh, science. Yeah. And in fact, as I often say, you know, when, when I debate people, speaking of skepticism, there are people who don't accept the fact that evolution is a fact, and I've spent a, an undue amount of time in this country talking to those people. Well, talking to, <laughs> talking to school boards and others and government trying to get... Which I want to applaud. But yeah, anyway, but... But... But, but there's this... There's this illusion that we somehow have this pact that we shake hands when we get our PhD. We're, you know, we, evolution, no, can't question it. And, you know, we want to be right. And the people don't understand that the, the way to become successful is to prove your colleagues wrong. That's the way to become a, a well-known scientist, is to make a discovery that proves wrong. So if there was something better than evolution, if it didn't work, you know, you'd be, Richard would be the first person to want to try and, and discover it in a sense because it would mean we'd learn something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think we can add something to that, which is that um, there's a, a, an attitude in the culture that says that everybody's entitled to their opinion and you've got to respect their opinion. No, you damn well haven't got to respect their opinion. <laughs> You know, you, you know that's a, that's a great segue because uh, because <laughs> there's an opinion of Neil's that I, I don't like. And um, <laughs> really, boy, knock me over with a feather. Hey, actually, he's going to say it's not an opinion. But let me ask, let me ask this. Jump to this question. Bring then. it on. Yeah, I figure. <laughs>